It's five minutes with me. Let's talk about Ebenezer's. Here's the good news. Teenagers in the 21st century still respond to Jesus. In some ways, this is more true than ever. The lives of teenagers have changed dramatically from when you and I were that age. Don't be tempted to say it's really the same. But this shift to more pain, more confusion, more stress, more isolation makes the Jesus way of living truly revolutionary. And that's something teenagers are hungry for. Today's teens are hungry for something to be passionate about. And it, it's a message. Uh, the message of Christ is wonderfully countercultural. While their schools often call for busyness, Jesus calls them to a relationship of trust and slowness. While their sports teams often call them to performance, Jesus calls them to a place where their worth is pre-established. While their parents and even their peer groups, and unfortunately even their churches, might call them to a variety, to wear a variety of masks to hide the pain in their lives, Jesus calls them to be themselves, the selves he so perfectly loves. The primary issue for today's frenzied teenagers is isolation. Teenagers today live in a world either completely or almost completely isolated from adults, and this experience of isolation goes deeper. Teenagers often experience isolation from self, others, and the world around them. But the gospel of Jesus can penetrate this isolation and bring about the kind of radical transformation we hope for in all our lives. In the blur of everyday life, it's tough for teenagers to experience these passion-worthy truths. But camps and retreats uh, still provide many monastic experiences opportunities to pull away from the distractions of normal life and practice a slower paced and spiritually focused daily rhythm. In my rush to move away from manipulation of teenagers, because it's not hard to get kids to respond if you use the kind of manipulative techniques often perpetrated by our history in our history of youth ministry, especially when it comes to decision night at camp, I once shied away from calling students to a decision. I was so conscious of not manipulating decisions that I threw the baby out with the bathwater. But in more recent years, I've come to realize a couple things about these decisions, particularly at camps and retreats. First, it's very rare to find people who made one and only one decision for Christ. Most of us make a series of decisions. In fact, most of us need to make a decision for Christ pretty much every day. Second, teenagers and adults still need to make stake in the ground choices. I'm not gonna be part of this behavior anymore. I am going to rearrange my priorities based on this new information. I am going to follow Jesus this year. These choices, this ongoing spirit, a series of spiritual choices in our lives become redirectors, guiding bumpers in our journey toward Christ. So finally, I've come to see spiritual decisions, especially the biggies made at camps and retreats, as Ebenezer's. Do you remember that great Old Testament word? Samuel put a big rock up and called it an Ebenezer and said it was to commemorate a spot where God met us in 1 Samuel 7, 12. An Ebenezer is a spiritual marker. Significant spiritual decisions, when not manipulated, become spiritual markers for students. When a 15-year-old girl finds six months later that she doesn't feel God anymore, she hopefully can reflect back on her Ebenezer from summer camp and say to herself, but I know I felt God then. I know God is real because I know God was real then. Sure, this is a little bit simplistic, but even and even Ebenezers can be forgotten with enough landscape in between. But a series of spiritual markers seems to almost or to most accurately reflect the reality of the spiritual life for those of us with a few more years of perspective. But we have hope. We know, not from scientific proof, but from our own life experience, that this God stuff is the real deal. And following Jesus is the only way to really experience the fullness of life. I want to be a youth worker who never manipulates or coerces teenagers into spiritual decisions. And I refuse to use certain types of programs to manufacture behavior and commitment. Instead, I am the environmental host, creating spaces where teenagers have an increased opportunity to experience Jesus. And that's why I still love, love, love the unique, out of the ordinary environment of camps and retreats. Let's help teenagers build 
some Ebenezers. The Youth Cartel Podcast Network. <laughs>